The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hey man, this is Donnie Baker, and you're watching a dose of Landis. You have to stay ball. Jake Roberts, and you're watching a dose of Landis, which is better than catching a clap. Hey, welcome to a dose of Landis. This is me, your host Jeff Landis. Of course, if you don't know who I am, you're in the wrong city, wrong town, or whatever. But anyways, today is a very special show. Well, you're thinking, why is it special? Special for two reasons. Number one reason is that I got to work with a guy who I idolized back in uh, Channel 10 days. He took his time out to help me out today, Brian Foster. You're the major reason why I'm excited about having a show today. Thank you very much for your help. He's always been like a role model to me. I've always looked up to him. He's the one that made Channel Studio B back in the day. He's been on a Jeff Landis show back in the day. But Brian, thank you very much for taking your time out for helping me out. It means a lot to me. Second, um, like I said, being on a Dean's show on the Fort Wayne CW, which is on every Sunday at 11 o'clock, you will be seeing on a dose of Landis. Landis Moment is pretty much talking about the next week after the show. So he's giving me a platform on CW Fort Wayne, which a dose of Landis will be on here pretty soon, probably next season during the summer. Who knows what's going on? So that's what's going on here tonight. And also, I want to represent old Fort Wayne Wizards. You know, if, you, if you're not old school Fort Wayne, you know, thanks to... Uh, John Ferris on Studio 13 for this very much. So ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned and watch some good, exciting clips from the Dean Show. And also, you're going to see some controversy. What are you thinking? What kind of controversy, Jeff? Well, we know how I don't like to keep my mouth shut. And back then when they had the whammies, let's just say uh, a thing that made tons of views. You'll also see the Sonny Taylor slam, where I talked about her being spoiled with what's up whammies. And then also Dean's going to show where she threatened to sue Dean Robinson for doing an interview with me and for not him taking it down. But also we're going to see the whole Boys to Men thing. We're also going to see a little documentary that Greg Locke from What's Up Magazine was going to do for me. So like I said, you're going to be seeing some stuff you've never seen on TV. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Roll those clips. Those are Landis in a Landis moment. Did a dose of Landis. This is the Landis moment. Dose. Jeff, what's coming up with the next episode of A Dose of Landis? Uh, Stack the Deck, a professional wrestling event that was held November 11th in South Bend, Indiana. You'll see hardcore matches, tag matches, diva matches, and tons of unpredictable stuff. We have Rock Langston, Jimmy Shawin, Lois London, Jake the Snake Roberts made a special appearance just as well that day. Too Many Days. That's a song by Sankofa, right? Yeah, and I was on the music video just as well. So where'd you get the t-shirt? From a Sankofa release, CD release party. So that's you on the t-shirt, right? Yeah. Alright, so he gave you a t-shirt? I had to pay for it. Watch A Dose of Landis, 11 p.m. Thursdays on Access Fort Wayne 2. Dose. Dose of Landis In a Landis moment In a Dose of Landis This is the Landis moment Dose Jeff, what's coming up on the next episode of A Dose of Landis? Season 2 of A Dose of Landis Show number 1 What can we expect to see? Jake the Snake Rubbers is going to be on there Talking about his books got coming out Talking about his... Uh, Documentary on Netflix. He started in professional wrestling in the like in the seventies. His dad was a professional wrestler just as well. What else is going on? Well, I personally want to thank Wesley Pollard for helping me out with the editing of a dose of Landis. Oh, he has his own show just as well. Check it out on Access One called Wesley TV. Dose. Dose. 
Watch A Dose of Landis, 11 p.m. Thursdays on Access Fort Wayne 2. Dose. Dose. Dose of Landis. In a Landis moment. In a Dose of Landis. This is the Landis moment. Dose. Jeff, what's happening in the next episode of A Dose of Landis? Well, let's just say there's going to be an interview with uh, Donnie Baker from the Bob and Tom Show. He's a national comedian, redneck comedy, talks about current events with a twist. Also, you can catch Donnie Baker here in Fort Wayne December 1st. Jeff, I understand you watched a DVD recently. Yes, I have. Well, what is it? Dawn of uh, Attitude. It's uh, kind of like a documentary of professional wrestling with a round table of old professional wrestlers back in the 90s, but preferably they were talking about 1997 era. Just a, a, brand, a brand new era. What happened in 97 that triggered all these changes? Competition. World Championship Wrestling. Watch A Dose of Landis, 11 p.m. Thursdays on Access Fort Wayne 2. Dose. Dose of Landis. In a Landis moment. In a Dose of Landis. This is the Landis moment. Dose. Jeff, what's happening on the next episode of A Dose of Landis? Tons of professional wrestling action from Price of Glory event called Heartless. Heartless? Why is it called Heartless? Well, I might as well say a lot of Heartless feuds going on between each other. So who's over there fighting? Oh, uh, let's see. We got Robbie E. from TNA coming out, Dr Jack Filler, Fabuzio, and then even that Kendo Stack matchup just as well. Sounds like a lot of action, Jeff. What else do you have going on in the wrestling world? December 2nd in Huntington, Indiana is called Christmas Clash, promoted by War Professional Wrestling. Watch A Dose of Landis, 11 p.m. Thursdays on Access Fort Wayne 2. Dose. Dose, Dose of Landis, in a Landis moment, in a Dose of Landis. This is the Landis moment. Dose. What's coming up on the next episode of A Dose of Landis? Well, my, it's going to be a repeat of my 22 anniversary show, my top 50 WTF moments. WTF moments? What does that mean? I really don't say it. So, what should we expect from the show? Oh my God, throughout the years of doing entertainment, uh, me being arrested, uh, cop kicking a wrestler, marriage proposals. Oh man, kind of, somebody being thrown through a glass window. Oh, man, just so much stuff going on within the me seeing, you know, boys to men throwing a barstool up hitting the, the studio light. So you never know what you're going to expect. Watch A Dose of Landis, 11 p.m. Thursdays on Access Fort Wayne 2. Dose. Dose, Dose of Landis. In a Landis moment. In a Dose of Landis. This is the Landis moment. Dose. Jeff, what's coming up on the next episode of A Dose of Landis? Well, we're getting an exclusive interview with my brother, Vicious Venom, a.k.a. Chris Landis. Who's Vicious Venom, a.k.a. Chris Landis? He is my uh, twin brother. He's pretty much telling his story of his professional wrestling career. Well, what else is happening? Um, I've got two boys of mine that wants to be on, on, on the show today. Come on, boys. We got Jeffrey Landis right here, and then we got Brett Landis right here. These are my uh, two boys. Watch A Dose of Landis, 11 p.m. Thursdays on Access Fort Wayne 2. Dose. Dose, Dose of Landis, in a Landis moment, in a Dose of Landis. This is the Landis moment. Dose. Dose. Jeff, what's coming up on the next episode of A Dose of Landis? I'm interviewing a filmmaker, Stefan Whitaker. Well, what sort of films does he make? Uh, he's done stuff from music videos, produced one that I was in with MC Enigma. He's working on actually a movie that we talked about during the show as well. Jeff, I understand you're on YouTube now. After so long, yeah, finally on YouTube. Look me up, Jeff Landis on YouTube. Jeff, I understand you just got a new DVD. Yes, that's uh, No Holds Barred with Hulk Hogan. A storyline with a company trying to take over another company. So it sounds like Hulk Hogan's version of Wall Street. Pretty much, yeah, but with fighting. 
watch A Dose of Landis, 11 p.m. Thursdays on Access Fort Wayne 2. Dose. Dose. Dose of Landis. In a Landis moment. Get a dose of Landis. This is the Landis moment. Dose. What's coming up on the next episode of A Dose of Landis? Plus my 23rd anniversary show, along with a celebrity edition. Who can we expect on the celebrity edition? Aaron Carter, Nappy Roots, Soil, Saving Abel, professional wrestlers such as Jerry Lawler, Horn Swoggle, aka Swoggle, Tommy Dreamer, Santino, Abyss. I've got a funny story to tell you about Abyss. It's I owed him some money back in the day. Tell me about that A Dose of Landis t-shirt you're wearing. Me and John Cena. If John Cena's on your shirt, isn't he going to want a piece of sales? I never thought of that. Well, Jeff, you might have to give these shirts away. Oh, yeah, that's true, too. Dose. Watch A Dose of Landis, 11 p.m. Thursdays on Access Fort Wayne 2. Dose. Dose, Dose of Landis. In a Landis moment. In a Dose of Landis. This is the Landis moment. Dose. Jeff, what's happening on the next episode of A Dose of Landis? Well, it's something that you've produced and put music to, which is the Landis moments here on Fort Wayne CW. So tell me about it. Well, showing moments from when I was interviewing Jason Snake Roberts, Donnie Baker, a lot of big names. And also, you're going to see some stuff that's never aired on TV before, such as the Sunny Taylor controversy, what I said about her a couple years ago about the What's Up Whammies. It was unfair how she got all these whammies and other people didn't. With me calling her spoiled brat and a lawsuit and all kinds of other things. Yo. Watch A Dose of Landis, 11 p.m. Thursdays on Access Fort Wayne 2. Dose. Dose, Dose of Landis, in a Landis moment. In a Dose of Landis, this is the Landis moment. Dose. Jeff, what's coming up on the next episode of A Dose of Landis? Well, part two of Vicious Venom, but what's different about this one is he's unmasking. In reality, Vicious Venom has been around for a long time, so there's been several Vicious Venoms. I mean, it could be me, it could be the next guy. Like I said, there's been several Venoms. There's been a Black Vicious Venom, there's been an Old Vicious Venom, there's been a Mexican Vicious Venom. So Vicious Venom has been all types of people, different shapes and sizes. In this interview, you'll find out some stuff about him. He even talks about his 50 kids that he has from 50 different women in 50 different states. That sounds like he's setting up franchises. <laughs> Watch A Dose of Landis, 11 p.m. Thursdays on Access Fort Wayne 2. Dose. Dose, Dose of Landis, in a Landis moment. In a Dose of Landis, this is the Landis moment. Dose. Dose. Jeff, what's coming up in the next episode of A Dose of Landis? Heroes and Legends, it's a wrestling show where you have the, the wrestlers from the yesteryear to now, like, to face each other in matches. Jay the King Lawler was on there, Ric Flair was there, Riggy the Dragon Steamboat, and many other professional wrestlers. Dose. Tupac, All Eyes on Me. It's a really, really good movie. Telling the story of life of how he started doing music and you know from childhood straight up Captain or Tupac. They both made history in, in music, so but the Tupac movie is much better. Watch A Dose of Landis, 11 p.m. Thursdays on Access Fort Wayne 2. Dose. Dose. Well, last year I was on TV for a while, then I just I got suspended for advertising prices on the show which you're not supposed to do, and a caller called in and said the F-bomb, and since I got suspended again, it's, it's like it comes natural. I've been suspended for smoking weed on camera. I've been suspended for taking a camera to Marion because of the whole liability thing. <sighs> because I've sang voice, man. I've done talk shows. I've done wrestling shows. A lot of people don't know you've got two kids now, right? Yeah, Jeffrey James, which is two. That's JJ the wrestler, right? Yeah, second version of me, coming to a <laughs> town near you or a TV near you. And there's Brett Nathaniel, and he's one years old. He's a mama's boy. Well, I'll do anything in the world for those damn kids. Yeah. And my wife. I love my wife to death, too. Mary of the kids. Yeah.
<laughs> That'd be a good reality show, Married with Kids. Do I call it Landis Lays It Down or something with reality? I don't know. I would love to do a reality show. I would go beyond reality. You know how these TV shows, you, when you do reality, it's just pretty much... That would be a good reality show. Day. Jeff Landis reality show. It'd be interesting, especially with my kids running wild, me and my wife arguing on trying to get the kid to sleep and stuff like that. And I gotta admit, I'm a textaholic, so I'm always online texting or updating on Facebook. Hey, what's up? You know, stuff like that. I've got my addictions. I'm drinking a lot of pop, Monster Energy drinks. Yeah, today when I told him I was going to come pick him up, he said, can you hook me up with a two-liter of Dew? Yeah. So I picked him up with a two-liter of Dew. I, I'm, I'm the cheapest guy that, like, if I go to Rustling Booking or something like that, you know, if my kids don't need diapers or something like that, I'll be like, hey, can you give me a two-liter of Dew? I mean, they're only $2. Or... You go home and chug it, or do they last you? Yeah. Trust me, if, if you want, buy me a 24-pack, that'd be gone within a week. Okay. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> and you were saying maybe at some point, maybe... Jeff Landis for mayor. Oh yeah, I've, I've thought about that countless of times. And is that because so many people know you, or because you have an interest in the city, or? I, for one, that's for, you know for the people that know me, and you know just to get my stats going up again. And for two, I think it'd be interesting to try to run the city. But I would need some help, people to help me out with doing you know what. Like I said, I suck with money. If you give me money, I don't know how to count that. You know, I've got good ideas to make the city good. Like you know, like I said, I'm a poor mother. Motherfucker. You can swear. Okay. I'm a poor motherfucker. I'm not going to lie about that, you know. I would actually have it be where, okay, I've come from this. This is what you got to see me go through. I would actually let the people know what's going on. Two laptops. One was my wife's one for me. TV. A whole bunch of wrestling DVDs. And some of my old backyard wrestling shows. Not old backyard wrestling shows, but, you know, my current ones. You told me they took your kids' Barney DVDs, too. Yes. that you believe that? That kind of shot me down. I mean... You can take from my kid, from me, but not from my kids. That's awful. Yeah. You know, being a parent, I learned you can't be putting yourself first. You have to put your kids first. And those those WrestleMania DVDs, those, we're talking like hundreds of dollars, right? I mean. Yeah, because I there's been times where I bought them, pawned them off for kids' diapers, and you know I figured, okay, cool, I got them. I don't have to pawn them off anymore. I've got them. I don't have to do anything else. You know, I've got them for I could watch them. You know, anytime. Actually, it's kind of funny. I thought about watching them a couple times. I came home, went to the park from the kids, and they were gone. Everything was gone. So now, what do you have on your mind? You're you're thinking comeback. I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking about comeback. I'm thinking about, you know, right now. My biggest thing is depression is getting to me. Depressed when you don't have kids is a lot different than when you do have kids, because you got, you're not just living for yourself. Yeah, you're living for them. You got to worry about what their next meal is, if they need diapers, or you know, the depression yeah. situation. You know. But like I said, I love those kids to death, and I love my wife. I'll do anything else for those three people. You're, you're in an important part of your life right now, man. Yeah. Any uh, last words before we cut? Uh, thanks to everybody for support, and I love my kids and wife. Take it easy. We'll see more of Jeff soon. Had a basement near you, I don't know. It's about time I give some love to Jeff Landis, the Access Fort Wayne television producer who's been producing television shows like The Jeff Landis Show since the early 1990s. I first met Jeff Landis probably back in 1995 when I was the TV radio editor at the Journal Gazette newspaper. I put together the TV journal. I put Jeff Landis in that mud. I produced a column called Remote Controller in which I talked to local celebrities about what they were watching on television. Jeff Landis was one of those remote controllers. After that, Jeff Landis had me on his television show in 1995. We were both young and pretty back then. I'm still a Jeff Landis fan, and we've been friends since the 90s. Some of my fondest television memories about Jeff Landis have to do with Boys to Men. Jeff used to sing these Boys to Men songs on his television show all the time. He absolutely loves Boys to Men. If Fort Wayne has a biggest boys to men fan. His name is Jeff Landis. Jeff Landis has been trying to land an interview with boys to men for I don't know how long. It seems like now that dream should come true. Boys to Men is coming to Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, Indiana on Sunday, June 18th. The group is on tour with new kids on the block and Paula Abdul. They're calling it the Total Package Tour. This June 18th concert with boys to men Paul Abdul and New Kids on the Block is the perfect opportunity for Jeff Landis to interview boys to men. 
Boys to Men is one of these groups that has won every music award under the sun. When Boys to Men or any of these major artists go on stage to receive their award, well, sometimes they tend to forget certain people, you know, and their thank yous. But they never forget to thank God and their fans. Boys to Men has no bigger fan in Fort Wayne than Jeff Landis. So for all you Jeff Landis fans out there, we just happen to be Boys to Men fans. Maybe you should get on the message boards. Maybe you should get on Twitter. Facebook, social media, talking about Jeff Landis and how great it would be for Jeff Landis to interview Boys to Men. I'm here with Jeff Landis. You might know him as Hot Stuff. You might know him as uh, Vicious Venom. You know, I don't know. But nonetheless, Jeff Landis is on the ballot for favorite TV personality in the What's Up Reader's Choice Awards this year. I don't know when that's taking place, probably sometime in April. I understand that people can vote for their favorite TV personality and radio personality, favorite band, venue, and so on until March 31st. So Jeff Landis, tell me about how is it that you're on the ballot this year? Well, this year they did a thing where you could vote you know, put on who you want on a ballot this year because it's always been the regular same people, like Third Frame, Sankofa, you know, the regular people that people used to see in their names, like a favorite teacher person like Melissa Long, um, Linda Jackson, you know, the major people. So what they did this year was Doug stirred the pot, which is kind of cool, and it was up to the people to vote. And so, like I said, I give the vote, I give it the people, I call it the people's whammies this year because, you know, the people voted. They're the ones that voted for the polls. So, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be in a ballot. So, my personal thanks goes to them because if it weren't for them and their votes, I wouldn't be where I'm at. So, from the bottom of my heart, no matter what I say, they'll always be my number one because if they didn't have that support for me, I wouldn't be there. Now, why should people vote for you as favorite personality? I mean, besides your being their favorite TV personality, but why should people vote for you? Well, you see, you have your Melissa Longs, your Curtis Smith, and your Linda Jacksons. They're always winning. The one thing about them, their network, ABC, Wayne TV. Yeah, I don't understand why the Wayne we forgot 55 Fox, which is phenomenal staff, Andrew Logsdon, Brooke Welch. I, you know, I, I've worked with them before, but you still, you know, what's up, forgot about them. Or some of the people who didn't vote for them, you know. It's, you know, my props go to them, but why me? Well, I'm from public access. I've seen, you know, the ballads before. Or not ballads, but I've seen the whammies before. You've seen Uncle Ducky on there, uh, Michael Loveless. You've seen them on, you know, me. You've seen, you've seen our names on there. But we've never officially made it to number one. And I want to be the first person out of public access to win a whammy to show that, hey, I don't have to be in access to win. You know, you don't have to be a big network to win a whammy. Now, Jeff, I don't want to let people know who I voted for. Oh, that's fine. For favorite TV personality. I don't want to tell them because I don't want to influence anybody because I want to make this a fair forum. Yeah, that's, that's what it to, is. If anybody else wants to come on the podcast and tell me why they should be voted favorite TV personality or radio personality or whatever, well, I want them to feel free to do so. But if somebody does want to vote for Jeff Landis, his favorite television personality, well, how would they go about doing that, Jeff? Okay, you go to whatsupmagazine.com or whatsup.com, I think it is, I'm not sure. Then you go to best of 2014. I'm number three on a ballot, and you'll see Melissa Long, Curtis Smith, and I'm number three, which shocks the hell out of me. How I ended up at number three. Then you got the other one, you know, the other people down on the list, and you can either vote in other for somebody else, or you could just vote Jeff Landis on the thing, or you could always pick up your local magazine, which is every Thursday. Yes, I, I know about the magazine because it's local. Same with Fort Wayne Reader. You know, pick them up. They, they're local and informative. But like I said, if you want to vote that way, go to What's Up and Pick up your What's Up magazine and vote for me for Fate Fair. Sorry, I'm, I'm hypnotized. I'm excited. I Hopefully I win. That's why I'm all jacked up. And say I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew, but I'm jacked up on something else right now. Well, how much money do you win from What's Up for winning the, the whammy? I don't know because I've never won. 
I, I, I all I know is you win a, a like a, a like a thing with the city in it and it's like a plaque or whatever type of deal. Then you get interviewed and Bob Rhodes, the guy of Wood Nickel, takes pictures of you, you know, of you winning a whammy. So I really don't know. I've never officially won because, like I said, I've always been number eight or number five. This is as close as I've become on the ballot. So, like I said, it, if I don't win, I know I made the top ten. I said that every year. If I don't win, I make the top ten because I, I see it happen because it happens every year. You know what's cool? If you win the whammy this year, you'll only need to win about forty more of those whammies to catch up to Sonny Taylor. <laughs> Sonny Taylor. Yeah, she seemed like a spoiled, stuck-up little brat. What do you say? Okay, you know how I am on Facebook. I'm very open, very blunt about everything. Well, she commented on something on one of my friends' pages. Next thing you know, I noticed her comment was there, and she unfriended me. Then there's one time I said something about Doug Trisco on What's Up Magazine. I said something about him, and she's like said something to defend him and stuff like that. I don't remember what it was, but she just seems, comes off cocky and arrogant like... Yeah, of course you're going to win awards. I found out some things on how, how what's up works, but I'm not going to say how, you know. I've, I've, i got insiders on how things work. You know, I, I would like to have my friends that work in the company to vote for me as well, but I don't have any friends for me in the company to vote. Oops, sorry, did I say that out loud? But, um, yeah, she somehow wins awards all the time. She's on the ballot this year. Well, I think the two of you need to hash this out. You and Sonny Taylor? <laughs> well, Sonny Taylor? Because, you know, I remember Sonny from back in the day. She was, uh, you know, I, I used to have her on Scene Machine, back my old public access show. I remember Scene yeah, Machine. Yeah, Sonny Taylor. But, uh, yeah, man, this is, a, this is a controversy. Who knew? Who knew that I was going to have Jeff Landis in here whipping up controversy with Sonny Taylor? Sonny Taylor, are you listening to this? You need to be listening to this, Sonny Taylor? Because uh, I need to get your side of this, Sonny, because uh, Jeff Landis just opened up a whole can of worms and whoop ass. Mm -hmm. A couple of cans he go, he done opened up over here. I mean, it's quite obvious. I mean, she wins all these awards. They don't give anybody else chance. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's, this year is a different story. It's the People's Award. So I said this year could be different completely from last year. Now, Sonny's got about eight dozen of these awards. What if she gave you one of hers? Would that help? No, because I didn't deserve it. I rather, do, I rather deserve it myself. I don't want somebody to just hand me an award because I don't deserve it. It's like in a handout, no. Make if that makes sense. What I'm saying, if, you know, I I don't want no handout. I want to deserve to win. You know, I want to show that hey, I, I really want this. All right. Well, I'm just whipping up this uh, Jeff right. Landis versus Sonny Taylor stuff because it's it's juicy to me. You oh, know? I, I understand completely. I might get some ratings out of this, John. But like I said, you know, she's good at what she does. I've seen her in public access. I you know I thought she was cute as hell one time when I watched her doing something on TV. You know, singing. But then, you know, I've seen her at the Miami's before, and she just seemed like she was a stuck-up snob. I mean, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'd be like, hey, Sonny, I apologize. Because that's the kind of person I am. Yeah, I come off like I'm cocky and arrogant sometimes, but I'm not. I'm just very proud and humble for what I've done. Jeff Landis, thank you for being hot stuff and for being outlandish. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> that's always me. <laughs> I wouldn't be any different. It's about time I give some love to Jeff Landis, the Access Fort Wayne television producer who's been producing television shows like The Jeff Landis Show since the early 1990s. I first met Jeff Landis probably back in 1995 when I was the TV radio editor at the Journal Gazette newspaper. I put together the TV journal. I put Jeff Landis in that mud. I produced a column called Remote Controller in which I talked to local celebrities about what they were watching on television. Jeff Landis was one of those remote controllers. After that, Jeff Landis had me on his television show in 1995. We were both young and pretty back then. I'm still a Jeff Landis fan, and we've been friends since the 90s. Some of my fondest television memories about Jeff Landis have to do with Boys to Men. Jeff used to sing these Boys to Men songs on his television show all the time. He absolutely loves Boys to Men. If Fort Wayne has a biggest Boys to Men fan. His name is Jeff Landis. Jeff Landis has been trying to land an interview with Boys to Men for I don't know how long. It seems like now that dream should come true. Boys to Men is coming to Banker's Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, Indiana, 
on Sunday, June 18th. The group is on tour with new kids on the block and Paula Abdul. They're calling it the Total Package Tour. This June 18th concert with Boyz II Men, Paula Abdul, and New Kids on the Block is the perfect opportunity for Jeff Landis to interview Boyz II Men. Boyz II Men is one of these groups that has won every music award under the sun. When Boyz II Men or any of these major artists go on stage to receive their award, well, sometimes they tend to forget certain people, you know, and their thank yous. But they never forget to thank God and their fans. Boyz II Men has no bigger fan in Fort Wayne than Jeff Landis. So for all you Jeff Landis fans out there, we just happen to be Boyz II Men fans, maybe you should get on the message boards. Maybe you should get on Twitter, Facebook, social media, talking about Jeff Landis and how great it would be for Jeff Landis to interview Boyz II Men. I'm Dean Robinson, and this is Summit City Noise News. You can tell because I'm wearing a tie. Wovo AM host Pat Miller is not going to host Edgerton Travel's commercial tour of Paris, France, scheduled for this May. Replacing Miller as host of the French tour is Wovo AM reporter Kayla Blakeslee. Blakeslee also hosts the station's You Tell Me series on YouTube. Pat Miller's ongoing health issues may be the reason for Blakesley replacing Miller on the tour. Miller says he passed out and collapsed last Wednesday at the Federated Media office here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. The last noteworthy tour Miller hosted for Edgerton Travel was a 2015 trip to Southern California called American Exceptionalism. Pat Miller's American Exceptionalism tour of Southern California took place the exact same time as the California family vacation for disgraced Indiana Congressman Marlon Stutzman. To Caleb Blakesley and everyone going on the Edgerton Travel Tour to France, Dean Robinson says, au revoir. When is a Jagged Edge concert not a Jagged Edge concert? The vocal group Jagged Edge came to perform at the Hour Auditorium at the Indiana Purdue Fort Wayne campus this past Saturday, but the group never took the stage. While paying attendees did see performances by Kelly Price and Donnell Jones, Jagged Edge did not perform. Commercial media in Fort Wayne is ignoring this story. That's why I have to go to Jeffrey Wayne Landis on Facebook to get to the bottom of this Jagged Edge concert controversy. According to Jessica Jordan, Kelly Price was great and Donnell Jones was okay. Some little trampy looking chick that they call Finesse was a hot mess. And as you know, Jagged Edge never performed. Keys told me that they said that the equipment wasn't up to their standards. Keys is Big Keys. Big Keys is a DJ at B96.9 FM here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. B96 plays that R&B and old school. So according to Jessica Jordan, Big Keys says Jagged Edge didn't believe the equipment was up to their standards. So to that, Jeffrey Wayne Landis says, oh wow, that's messed up. Hope people got their money back. To which Jessica Jordan replies, nope, they didn't. The promoter claimed that Jagged Edge was paid. He said that he would bring someone else here for a discount to those who have ticket stubs. Now, I don't know who this Jessica Jordan is, but Jessica Jordan has just become my favorite reporter in Fort Wayne. This chick must be ill because she's coming down with the facts. So you got Jessica Jordan getting the lowdown from Big Keys from B96 FM. B96 is one of the radio stations that's part of the Adams Radio Group. That's my boy JJ Fabini holding it down over there, running that mod. But JJ couldn't even give me any details on this because JJ's on vacation with that delightful little baby of his. Mm-hmm. Don't even worry about me, dog. Go on, JJ. Now, it's possible that some legal troubles may have caught up with Jagged Edge. Kyle Norman, one of the members of the group, was locked down in DeKalb County Jail in Georgia earlier this month. Kyle Norman violated the terms of his probation stemming from his arrest in November 2016 for family violence and battery. Supposedly, Kyle Norman got drunk, tried to stab his son, and then made a child watch this whole ordeal. 
when the judge sentenced Kyle Norman to 13 days in jail for probation violation at the end of January, well, at that time, the judge told Norman, look, dude, when you get out of jail, you have to prove that you went to these 12 anger management classes. This notion of Kyle Norman not attending these 12 anger management classes, well, that was one of the terms of his probation that he violated in the first place, allegedly. Now, I don't know if Kyle Norman ever proved to the judge that he attended those 12 anger management classes, but I do know that Jagged Edge did not perform in Fort Wayne last Saturday night for some reason or another. Fort Wayne Commercial News is not talking about Jagged Edge dissing Fort Wayne. Jagged Edge is not talking about Jagged Edge dissing Fort Wayne on their Facebook page. So when you go to their Facebook page, you're going to find that these mugs are posting a bunch of motivational memes as well as a story about a white girl who got disowned by her parents for dating a brother. Go on, white girl. In other entertainment news, the 2016 movie Suicide Squad, with Will Smith and Margot Robbie in hot pants, is not a very good movie. If you want to see a good movie about the Suicide Squad, watch Batman Assault on Arkham. The 2014 feature is animated. It runs about half the time as Suicide Squad. But Batman Assault on Arkham, it has a plot and storylines that actually make sense. Suicide Squad has none of that. Batman Assault on Arkham is available now on DVD. That's all the time we have news for. I'm Dean Robinson, and this has been Summit City Noise News, because I'm wearing a tie. Some people know about my public social commentary and overtly political video productions. Producing that stuff doesn't leave a lot of time for squabbling with Fort Wayne artists and musicians, even though these squabbles keep pulling me back in. Even though these squabbles are silly, they can be educational as well as highly entertaining. Fort Wayne artists and musicians are notoriously thin-skinned, which may be the result of Fort Wayne media failing to offer critical analysis of Fort Wayne art and music. Fort Wayne media, like What's Up Magazine and the Journal Gazette newspaper, never criticize local art. They preview it, promote it, and advertise it, but they never publish critical reviews. What's Up Magazine publishes positive reviews of local music releases. When it comes to local stage plays, What's Up allows the producers and directors to write their own previews and reviews. Which brings me to Fort Wayne Whammy Slam, Jeff Landis Blast Sonny Taylor. This is about a video interview with Access Fort Wayne TV producer and personality, Jeff Landis, that I published on YouTube two years ago. Now back then, Jeff Landis really wanted to win a What's Up Reader's Choice Award something fierce. I mean, he really wanted that award bad. Now this award is also known as the Whammy. Now I don't think anyone has won more whammies than Fort Wayne singer-songwriter Sonny Taylor also known as Sonny Taylor Berry. Now, this is what Sonny Taylor says on her Our Stage page online. My name is Sonny. I was born just before the Super Bowl 13 pregame. I've been singing since halftime. I began playing guitar 16 years ago. I'd like to think I've gotten better at it since, but that's up for debate. I've independently released three albums and have recently released a four-song EP. I've won boxes full of writing and performance awards from a regional entertainment magazine, www.whatsup.com, which leads me to believe I'm not so bad at this music stuff. Sunny says she has won boxes full of whammy awards from What's Up Magazine. Boxes. Boxes, people. Boxes full of those mugs. When you go to Sunny Taylor's house, them whammy boxes are all over that piece. You can't bat an eyelash without knocking over a stack of whammy boxes, okay? All right, during the 2015 interview with Jeff Landis, we addressed the disparity of what's up accolades between Jeff Landis and Sonny Taylor. Let's take a look. Roll a clip. You know what's cool, if you win the whammy this year, you'll only need to win about 40 more of those whammies to catch up to Sonny Taylor. <laughs> Sonny Taylor. 
Yeah, she seemed like a spoiled, stuck up little brat. Why do you say that? Okay, you know how I am on Facebook. I'm very open, very blind about everything. Well, she commented on something on one of my friends' pages. Next thing you know, I know, so comment was there and she unfriended me. Then there's one time I said something about Doug Trusco on What's Up Magazine. I said something about him. And she's like, said something to defend him and stuff like that. I don't remember what it was, but she just seems, comes off cocky and arrogant. Somehow, Sunny Taylor didn't see that clip until this month. And she didn't like it, not one bit. Here's what Sunny Taylor said to me through Facebook Messenger on May 7th. You have 24 hours to remove this slanderous interview with Jeff Landis from YouTube, or I will begin a defamation suit against you. Jeff also apologized with integrity and said he would also like it removed. And I honestly don't care what Barish whoever said. He is about as relevant as your desperate cable access show. Barish Warish is somebody on YouTube who commented on the Sonny Taylor video. Barish Warish doesn't care for Sonny Taylor stuff. Anyway, Sonny Taylor says about me, Dean Robinson, everything about you is mediocre and a cry for attention. Your mom didn't hug you enough as a child, I suppose. You feed off of other people's discord. Does that feel good? To a psychopath is wood. You're hurt that I delete you. Glad to know I mean so much to you. Expect a call really soon. Dean J, LOL. P.S. I had an amazing show tonight and everyone sang along to my mediocre four chord songs. It was beautiful. So people, that was back on May 7th. Sonny Taylor texting me late night to talk about how my mom is not hugging me, to tell me about how mediocre I am, something about a psychopath, then threatens me with a lawsuit before telling me how great a performance went that night. I told Sonny I'm not taking the video down, and if she wants to sue me, it's her money to waste on a lawyer if she wants. See you in court. Because I think that would be fun. Me being the silly guy that I am, thought this silly whammy matter would fade away. That was silly of me. So this is Saturday, today, May 26th. Sonny Taylor Berry talking to Jeff Landis. P.S. The lawsuit will not affect you. Dean chooses to leave up the video. He didn't have permission to use my photo either. You were just giving your opinion. Dean used to be cool. Not sure what happened. Although, I've heard some good theories. It seems that Sonny Taylor has come to peace with Jeff Landis calling her a spoiled little brat. Sonny actually says, you were just giving your opinion. But Sonny Taylor aims to sue the pants off this brother in Allen County Superior Court because everything about me is mediocre and a cry for attention. My mom didn't hug me enough as a child. I feed off of other people's discord. Does that feel good? To a psychopath it would. That's actually a good rhyme, Sonny. You should perform it live on stage before I perform it live in court. Ladies and gentlemen, um, personally I want to say everybody, thank you for watching A Dose of Landis. You know, it means a lot to me. Again, being on a Dean show on CW every week means a lot to me. I mean, he's showing, helping me out with advertising the show that's going on, letting everybody know what's going on in the world of Adosa Landis. So, yeah, this is season two. I've got plenty more things going on. You're like, what's going on, Jeff? Well, let's just say Ron Jeremy might be coming on the show. Jake the Snake Roberts might be on the show again. And working on plenty of big things coming on. So I'm not going to say what it all is yet because I'm in talks because I don't want to say, hey, I'm bringing this guy on, but I'm in talks right now. Hell, I might even cover the Indiana Comic Con in Indianapolis, Indiana. So let's just say that I'm doing business 24 hours even in my sleep. But I also want to talk about something again. Another Fort Wayne Retro. Fort Wayne Wizards, baby, right here. Oh, another thing I forgot to talk about in the beginning of the show. I said the next show is going to be the last time I talk about it. But ladies and gentlemen, here's the email right here that Boyce to Men's agent sent me about them not to come on after trying for... Back in 1994 when I first started. But here's the email. But I will tell you what. The next show will be the very last time I bring it up. That's all I'm going to say. But again, thank you for watching Dos Landis. Stay tuned for Season 2, Show 6. Sorry, there's several shows I've been doing. Show 6. Well, Jeff, what's on Show 6? Show 6 will be an extra dose of Landis. 
plus the extra dose. Well, let's just say we will be getting interviews on... Uh, we have my kids wrestling inside the wrestling ring in a professional wrestling ring being watched by me, obviously. And then you see some interview with Mike Bolin and tons of other stuff. And you're going to see some stuff from an old fun spot park showing his old, old retro clips. So, again, you're going to get a lot of dose. You're going to see an interview with me with Kevin York where he interviews me. So, again, like I said, this you're going to be getting an extra dose of the next next show. So, like me on Facebook, The Dose of Landis. Like Jeff Landis on Facebook. And, again, thank you, Brian for coming out, taking your time of your day. The weather sucks like a porn star out there, but thank you very much for coming. Again, thank you for watching Dose of Landis. Stay tuned for next week. Dose. Here today, I throw, man. Yeah. Wizards, baby. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Hey, right, man, this is Donnie Biker, and you're watching a dose of Landis. You have to. Stay ball. Jake Roberts, and you're watching a dose of Landis, which is better than catching a clap.